Hi everyone, it's Julian today. I'm gonna be showing you how to make modern trancey techno style of DJ Heartstring Narcissus, this very like emotional style of stuff. As always, you can grab this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, the entire template is available at the top of the description on my website. Don't miss out. If you guys wanna see more videos like this, definitely go grab that if you guys wanna support me. But also, if you wanna support yourselves, this is a great way to make the best music of your life today. This is a really high quality template. Everything's all dialed in and good. You can just just drop it in and get started right now. Link is at the top of the description. Thanks so much for the support, guys. And let's dive in. All right, we're at 150 BPM, and the first thing we got here is the low end. So what we have here is we got a big fat 909 kick. Right, you can see it's just a really, this one is actually like pretty close to what you would get just right out of the drum machine. I think I might have saturated this like when I exported it or something, but this is pretty much just straight out of a 909 drum machine, right? I pitched it up a little bit and it's just turned up like right in the mix. If you listen, it's right on top. No processing required. And then for the bass line, so this is, you know, really simple, just on the upbeats. Just do -um -do -um, like that. And this is doing the chord progression. So we're in G minor, we're going G or G sharp minor. We're going G sharp minor, E major, V major, F sharp major. So we're going root note, sixth, third, seventh. And then for the sound, it's made with wavetable. You know, it's a pretty simple, just big fat trancy bass. It's simple stuff, but it takes a bit of work to really get it sounding good and really dial it in. You can see it's a sub with a saw wave and then a pulse wave. It's the square wave here, which I added this pulse with. You can see there's a bit of movement on the filter with this envelope here and also on the pulse width. If I turn that filter off, you can hear that like kind of crunch we get from that. And that helps this sound, you know, a bit different as well. I have an EQ cutting at 40 hertz. It makes the whole groove just a lot more like bouncy and kind of takes out mud from the bass. And yeah, then we have the pad. Do you see this just sits over the chord progression? It's based on the chord progression. We have the same root notes from the bass line, but then it's just all these different other notes up top. And what it really is, is a bit of a melody, honestly. It's kind of like you have those four notes that I showed you that you saw with the bass, but then we've got this melody. And then we have this melody. Right, and it's all kind of coming together. And as long as it's all in the same key, which it is, these are all just from the G-sharp minor scale. We got like the third, fourth, fifth, seventh, another root note, root note, third, ninth. You know, it's all stuff in that scale. It'll come together and it'll add a lot of musical texture. Then we have, for the sound, it's made with wavetable. So I've got this wavetable, this transformations here, and then a square wave from Basic Shapes. You can see we just got a bit of LFO on the wavetable position, low pass filter on that to kind of dial it back a little. A bit of unison, some chorus, we got the old school chorus there, a bit of echo, and some reverb. Then we have this lead. So it's very simple. Here's the notes you can see, you know, it's mainly just dancing around this G sharp minor thing. It, it kind of sounds like B major, I think, when you're really, like, listening to it because of the way this works. Like, when it gets down to that B, it really feels like the root note. And that goes well with that chord progression. So it's really just kind of playing around with, like, you know, the relative major in this case. For the sound, this one's made with analog. We've got a square wave here. we got a low-pass filter, a little bit of envelope, a little bit of key tracking, some vibrato. Bit of chorus, a bit of reverb, and some saturation to kind of make it a bit warmer. Then we have the ARP. So 
this ARP on first glance might seem crazy. It's actually pretty simple if you really look at it. So for example, here we got what is that? That's root note, fourth, and then another fourth up top. You know, pretty simple stuff. I would say the thing that makes this interesting is the rhythm where it's like where it's like dun na na dun na and just as it's about to be see like that exact same thing twice, instead it goes dun na na dun na dun like it goes down there. So then this gets like you hear that rhythm with the top notes up there? And then what's happening here is like, okay, then it goes down. You know, it's actually just following the chord progression if you look at it, right? And then we're just changing the top notes a little bit. Like this time, this one, the whole time is the second note for all of these, you know? So it's just little changes once you make that first pattern. So then we've got for the sound this wavetable sound. So it's a saw wave and then another saw wave with a bit of pulse width. Again, this is kind of like the bass where it's a simple sound in theory. It's just a bit of finesse to give it the texture and really actually dial it into what's going to sound good in the track. So we got that. Then we got a low pass filter. If you look at the matrix here, we got a little envelope on the filter, a bit of unison, some chorus. An echo and reverb without being too much getting in the way. I have this auto pan here to make it sound like it's being side chained to the kick. <laughs> kind of keeps this under control since it's so rapid fire. <laughs> it allows you to still hear the other elements. And ideally, in the whole arrangement, it would kind of be like you have one part maybe where it's like. <laughs> you know, and then the pad could maybe come in a little. <laughs> And then the lead would go away, and then you would have. Well, obviously, for tutorial purposes, we got it all happening at once. So that is all the synths. And you can see it's actually just four synths, but it creates so much music in the track. You know, you don't need, a, I think when you're listening to these tracks, you might think you need a lot of elements. You really don't. You know, this is kind of like just about everything you would need besides maybe some background effects. And it's only four cents. But then we have the drums. So you can hear it's just this crazy rapid fire techno groove. So I'll kind of start with the main drums, which would be these. Right, like this is what you want to start with. You get the kick, get the bass dialed in, then you can move up to this. This one's just a nice like 909 type open hi-hat. We got the sustain all the way down. It's just this little short. And this is a really good technique for this stuff because if you pull that up, see that's like what the sample sounds like by default. But if you bring that sustain down, you get this, you can make a sample really like what you need it to be. And the groove sits better with that short one. Then we got this 909 clap. You know, pretty simple. It's just a matter of turning it up and not, you know, trying to oversaturate it, but just using the volume to get it right. So from there, then we can move up to like, we got a nice closed hi hat in the background. Also with this operator percussion too. So it's just it's just going da -da 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 Right? And what it is is it's some white noise with a short envelope, a bandpass filter with an envelope, and a hard shaper to make it a bit more punchy. And then we have this LFO moving the filter around. It's on the sample and hold, so it's basically like a random movement. And you can see you get this like morphing, evolving percussion. We have a little bit of filter delay which adds some movement. I mean, the drum bus, which helps get it away from just sounding so, like, synthy. And then a high pass filter. So at this stage, now we have this stuff. We got some nice background movement, but we still need a few more drums. So then we go to this little drum rack here. So this is one of these drum racks from the Ableton sidebar. I just dragged in and found some percussion. It's actually a really good technique. Like if you have a beat like this, 
and you want to just add some percussion rather than dig through sample packs try just grabbing one of these drum racks that ableton just has over here like you should just have a bunch of them even if you don't have this many there's always some in there that you can grab and just find random sounds in there that's what i did here and then you create this nice groove you can just throw them in so we got that adding some kind of groove then we have this 808 hi-hat which is like You know, on top of that open hi-hat, sounds good. And then the last drum we have here is this little cowbell. They use these a lot in these type of tracks, so I wanted to show you. And I think, you can see, it's, you know, it's simple. You just get the cowbell sound. No processing really required. It's mainly just where you place it, like, not trying to do this too much, but just having it, like, right at the end of the bar like that. <laughs> Just like a little stab in there. And that's gonna be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, the entire templates available at the top of the description on my website. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video.